Today's video, we are going to be talking about Arc Nova strategy, and we are going to be doing a deep dive on each of the playable maps and understanding which strategies work better on those maps, where you might want to start building on those maps, and everything you need to know to be successful no matter which map you choose for your game of Arc Nova. Each of the maps in Arc Nova have a few characteristics that are going to set them apart from one another. So the first thing, and probably the most obvious to players, is the special ability that each map has uh, printed on the bottom of the, of the map. The second thing that we're going to look at is the different um, conservation project bonus available to players. So if you look at a map, each one is going to have the same three bonuses at the top of the map, uh, conservation project section, and then at the bottom, the same three, and then there's always one conservation project bonus that's different for each map. So we'll take a look at each of those bonuses and see um, how you can really leverage those to your advantage. After that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some uh, specific sponsor cards and animal cards and just a general type of card uh, that you might want to be playing on that given map. Taking a look at map number one today, the Observation Tower. So this uh, map, really in my first few playthroughs, I thought it was kind of meh. You know, really wasn't that impressed by it, uh, but then when I when I really saw it for what it was, um, it has a very unique power, uh, and I've recently uh, begun to like this map a lot more. So the unique thing about this power, uh, which is to gain two points every time we flip an adjacent standard enclosure, um, that benefit there is the only of the map abilities that give bonus points. All the other map abilities give income. Uh, or some other unique ability, but this is the only one that gives points. So in a typical scenario, assuming we fill our map something like this, uh, we might, on average, get a solid eight points if we were to flip these four standard enclosures next to our, uh, next to our board. So as we go on, we're gonna talk about some ways where we can maybe get more than that eight points, uh, but in general, uh, I think it's an underrated ability uh, to get those points. Um, it's really a powerful effect um, that you won't get from your other maps. The next thing we want to look at is the Conservation Project uh, Unique Bonus. So on this map, uh, that is to play a sponsor for money. Now, uh, generally, I enjoy uh, the play a sponsor for money as a placement bonus. Now. As a conservation project bonus, I've, I've gone hit or miss on this. So the, the downside is that, you know, by that point in the game, uh, I oftentimes have played all my, my really valuable sponsors and I don't have a ton left to play uh, in the mid to late game. So that can be somewhat of a diminishing return. It is a nice option to have, but I, I don't really think this is the thing that um, we're typically choosing this map for. It's not really the, the strongest thing about this map. Um, so I, I, I put it in the B range, uh, but you know there are situations where it can be very, very powerful. Um, now looking at the placement bonuses on the map, um, you know most maps have two or three X spots, um, so, that, so that is pretty typical. Uh, the one reputation that's on every map at least, uh, so that's, that's pretty typical. Um, you know, clever two card draws. Uh, this this does have two um, five dollar spots, which is a little above average on the money side. But I think that because of how powerful the extra points are, uh, the game designers didn't give us a ton of super powerful placement bonuses on this map. Now, having said that, uh, let's take a look at some of the options for starting out with our building. Now, uh, I would say. As a blanket statement, uh, it's going to be more valuable to get the early income boost by building around our tower. So uh, depending on if I need the money or not, um, some of my common opening lines will be uh, a large enclosure, getting the X token, and touching uh, the, the observation tower. So you can see a 4 fits quite nicely in there. can also do the same with a 5 enclosure. Pretty good options there. You get the X token uh, and you play one big animal, but you get a, a two point bonus there. 
uh, before the first break. So that's pretty valuable. Now, if you're more focused uh, or more concerned about playing two animals before the first break, sometimes it's challenging to get the money to do that, uh, but we still probably want to get our bonus here. Uh, so sometimes I'll, I'll opt for starting in this corner, uh, maybe something like a three and a one, uh, which will get me the five dollars and that'll allow me to play two animals and, and get one of my bonuses before the first break. So those are two pretty common spots you might want to start with this map. Um, other options, depending on the circumstances, um, if you're going for a two university opening, it's very valuable to get the one reputation. So you might want to start with something like that, and then, you know, maybe something like that, because we still want to work towards getting our two two bonus appeal as early as possible in the game, uh, but you might need to get the one reputation uh, there at the bottom. So those are probably the three most common uh, openings that I use because uh, they all get me close to my observation tower, um, but they don't really detriment me too much. Now, sometimes you have things that require water and unfortunately the observation tower is very, very far away from water. So um, what we can do, if we have something like aquarium or maybe one of the tigers that require water, um, there's a few options for where we might want to start on the map. So um, in a recent game, I had aquarium. Um, so I actually started in the north portion of the map um, and I placed the special tile there, which uh, you know had some good success. It looked something like uh, this as my first play of the game. Oh, how did I do it? Something like that, if I recall correctly. No, I think it was like that. Uh, and then I followed that up with a large enclosure uh, and actually ended up playing a tiger, uh, which, which got me, you know, several bonus points off of the aquarium. Uh, so this ended up being worthwhile. And, and then I still was able to get uh, enclosures over here eventually you know, netting me those bonus points later in the game. So, it's not the end of the world uh, if you have some other valuable reason to go over by the water. Okay, so now that we've looked at all the, um, the build options on this map, let's take a look at where our points are. So, in this map, we have the uh, partner zoos are going to earn us the most points here, and we're going to get one for universities. Uh, and then we don't need to get all of our association workers to get the bonus point. So um, this is a map, I would say, um, where I typically will um, try not to... Uh, well, this is typically a no sponsors upgrade map for me, uh, but that's, you know, depending on the game state. Uh, and uh, I would say flipping association is really valuable because you really do want to get four partner zoos and so that opens up uh, more opportunities to uh, get partner zoos and reputation uh, and to get the donations earlier on. So I would encourage, uh, you know, flipping association and really focusing on getting that fourth partner zoo at some point in the game. The first way that we can maximize our special ability with this map is by playing one of the 10 release an animal conservation project. So there's five, one for each continent and one for each of the major animal types, excluding of course uh, bears and petting zoo animals. Um, you really don't want to release a guinea pig into the wild, I'll tell you what. Uh, but you know, these can, what you can do is you can build an animal, uh, get the two points for placing the animal, then release that animal and then get two points for placing a new animal uh, back into that same enclosure. So this can be a very powerful way to get uh, squeeze those two extra points out uh, on this map. Now the second way that we can take advantage of using our map special ability is by building either reptiles or birds into the enclosures near our observation tower. We'll get the bonus points when we first place them and then we'll build one of the special enclosures, either a uh, dog bone as my dad calls it or the large bird aviary. Um, and by doing that, we can take the animals that we had previously placed and received our two-point bonus, move them into the um, respective special enclosure, 
and then we're going to rescore those points when we fill those enclosures up again. So, uh, you know, in a perfect world, you fill all uh, four of the enclosures uh, with, let's say, all these reptiles. You move all those reptiles to the uh, reptile house, and then you can get an additional eight appeal bonus when you refill those, um, those things, those enclosures. The last and probably the least common way that we can take advantage of our two appeal bonus here is with this special sponsor card, Diversity Researcher. So the ability for this card basically says that we can build on top of uh, rock and water spaces. So what this allows us to do is we can cover these spots behind our, uh, behind our observation tower, and in doing so, it's gonna give us an opportunity to get an extra four points uh, by flipping these enclosures on two spots that were not previously um, available to us. Now, the problems with this is you probably don't wanna be flipping sponsors to the level two side just for diversity researcher. Uh, there's probably a lot better ways to use your card upgrades than getting the four points here. But it is a, a corner case and uh, I think it's something quite fun uh, when you're able to do it. These are four of the sponsor cards I want to highlight uh, that are potentially good with the game plan you want to play uh, using this map. Now, uh, Aerial Cableway or Cable Car, if you play online, that uh, two per rock, it's already a powerful card on its own accord, but I find that I typically uh, will be trying to fill up my enclosures around the observation tower, all of which contain rocks. Uh, so, so it's going to be easy to fulfill the requirements here, get a lot of points off that. Secondly, we already talked about it, uh, you know, we really do like releasing animals on this map to double up on our, our innate power. So if we're already going to be doing that, we might as well uh, double dip and, you know, get some extra points and uh, maybe we can even triple up by using the special ability of migration recording. Lastly, uh, I've just found that in general, uh, because of the way the map's laid out, uh, I find that I build a lot of small animals near my observation tower. Uh, so in general, expert in small animals is a good way to allow me to do that on the cheap. Um, and then native lizards, uh, again, you already want to probably be starting near your observation tower, uh, which is, there's four rocks right there by the tower. Um, and then there's five additional rocks, so you could very easily get a nine point uh, native lizards uh, here on the front end. The only downside here is you have to be careful uh, that you get this card played early enough uh, as it does have a requirement of max 25. And since you're getting so many bonus points early with the extra two appeal, um, you gotta make sure you play this early enough um, and you might not get the full nine points. Um, that's just a caution there. So as far as your end of game bonuses, um, that they were pretty good with this map. Um, above average, I would say is climbing park because typically climbing park is very challenging to achieve, but a lot of the animals you want to play on this map have rock icons. So it, it's a little easier than normal to, to play with climbing park here. Uh, again, I talked about earlier, I have a slight preference for small animals on this map. I find that it's easier to fit the enclosures uh, the smaller enclosures near and get the bonuses. Um, so I, I, I tend to like small animals on this map. And then uh, the last one here, Naturalist Zoo, uh, in a blanket statement is one of the worst conservation, or sorry, one of the worst end game bonus cards that you can get. But if we're already trying to do a lot of uh, releasing to the wild uh, with this map, you know, that's gonna be a situation where we could easily score three potentially maybe four points off a of naturalist zoo, um, and, and scoring two should be no problem if we're utilizing the uh, special enclosures as well as the um, release conservation projects. So just something to look out for. Uh, you know, normally naturalist zoo is, is pretty bad, but this is a case where you might actually be able to get the four points uh, for the naturalist zoo. So that wraps up our review of map number one here. Um, in conclusion, a lot of fun things that you can do with this map. Um, and, you know, I've always said when it comes to games, points are points. Uh, you got to score points to win the game, and uh, this map gives you a good way to do that. 
So my overall rating for this map is four stars out of five. Uh, what that means is this is going to come in at my number three map. Number three out of eight is uh, Observation Tower. Um, we'll get to the other videos and you'll see the number one and number two slot. So thanks for tuning in today. Um, remember, have fun out there. And uh, as always, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Thank you.